Hello everyone and welcome to Angie B Crafts. So today I thought I would show you my new fabulous Jane Davenport watercolours. So what I love about these, number one, you get these, oh it's got muck on it already, these ever so cute little tins. So I've got as you can see three different sets. So I'm going to start with this one. This one is the primary one, and you know it's the primary, but the brights even. I can't even say the right one. The bright one, but it does have the primaries in it. So it has three primary colours here. But then it has this fabulous little um, swatch chart, which if you've never used watercolours before, it's really useful. It is with your acrylics as well, but probably more so with watercolours. It's useful to do swatches because what you see here isn't necessarily what you then see when you paint it and it's also good if you have um, them all in one place if you have different sets of watercolours you can actually have a book with all the different swatching in it I need to redo a lot of my swatches because they're in different places I need to actually bring them all into one swatching book but that's for another day um, so these are fabulous I mean just looking at the pigment intensity on these so I've already started swatching these ones just to show you how they look and I've started to use them which is why you'll see muck and um, water over them because what I tend to do which I will be showing you is spray them to get them over all wet and then what you then need to be careful of is you don't just then plonk your swatches back on top so have a think about what are you going to do with your swatch are you going to stick it in the lid so it's not in contact are you going to stick it underneath are you going to keep it separate so this is set number one so this is your brights and as you can see it's got your three primaries it's got the called buzzy ladybug and butterfly i mean these names are just fab then we have this beautiful turquoise color which is 70s eyeshadow which is bob on absolutely perfect description mermaid see this here almost looks black but when you look up here it's this beautiful green color this one probably looks it's called Jiminy it's probably comparable then you come down here again it looks like we've got another black we haven't we've got ink which is a very deep blue we then have royal which comes out more purple to me royal is more of um, a royal blue that would be my first thing but I suppose royal you would have purple in some of the royal robes you may see so I see where they're going mystic another purple Frida which is a beautiful deep red I mean that is a stunning stunning color fairy tale is a fuchsia color and then you have this very very vibrant pink I think this color is just it's such fun such fun as Miranda would say so as I say you get this little um, booklet in each of them and it just gives you an idea of what's in them so it's saying here it's a palette of fine watercolors which features three primaries so you can mix any color and rem remember that when you get something that's got your primary colors in as long as you have your primary colors you can mix any other color and I just love this I just I think, and obviously you get a little Jane Davenport picture but I love the fact that you get this little swatching area so I'm gonna pop that to one side and have a look at the others so the next set we're going to have a look at now this one hasn't been swatched so I'll swatch this with you so there's your blank swatch card we we'll flip it over this is the glitzy palette glitzy glitz C. so it's got two metallics in it so let's find out which of the metallics I can guess which they are I'm going to guess this one and this one are the metallics but as you see I haven't used these I've unwrapped them because otherwise it would be tedious you're watching me unwrapping them but I'm not sure so let's see how it ends up so I've got my card what I, what you do is when you get them they have the names written on them so you know they're in the right order so as long as you don't do what I just did a little while ago with these ones and actually drop some out of the packet it's not a good plan but once you've done your um, test swatches it's okay if you do happen to drop them because you can just do a comparison of color to get them back in the right order so I just use water out of my bottle and spray over the top you don't have to do that you can just use your brush to add your water on as and when you want it but I find if I actually wet the surface first it just makes it a little bit easier to pick up the colors this is called water spirit which isn't at all what I was expecting it to be. It's kind of a deep ochre colour, a very deep greeny brown colour. The next one is called Sylph. 
I don't know what that is. It's not a word I know. It's a beautiful green colour though. I mean, look at that, that's stunning. Stunning. This next one, I don't want to see, I'm not knowing these words. I wonder if they're sea related. I should Google them, shouldn't I? Nereed or Nereed that is a gorgeous blue so what you can do when you're swatching is you can do your really deep so you can see we've got the really deep color and then you can pull it out a little bit if you've got a bigger area to swatch you can get a better definition of your color so one thing that you could do if we do it on the next one i'm just going to do it on this piece of paper you can start deep and then just pull your color out and then you see the full range that you can get just with that one colour and it's a really useful way of knowing what you've got so let's do a little colour swatch on here so again you can, you've not really got a lot of space here to do it you can if you're a lot more careful and you use a lot less pigment you can actually do it but again if you want to you can put the colour down let's put a good good bit of colour down and then I'm going to clean off my brush and just use the water I'm not I'm going to come in from back here and bring it in and then start pulling the color out so this is how you can then get an even paler color so you're actually going in and saying just give us a little bit of color and then you can bring it right out so you can get a really really wide range so you, it's hard to believe that this very pale pink comes from the same pigmentation as this deep red colour. So watercolours are incredibly versatile because of that. This next one is called Frolicsome. What a beautiful name. Now it looks brown and it is, it's, it's kind of, oh what's the word I'm looking for? This reminds me of um, sandstone. It's got a little look of sandstone I've gone over the lines a little bit there but we'll not worry so we now have this beautiful yellow color and this is called tresses so I'm gonna just keep it away a little bit from that and come over if you want to find out what the color mix looks like you can touch them together but I want to keep the colors quite pure at the minute until I get used to them so the next one onto the second row sea nymph now that just sounds really nice doesn't it? it sounds like it's going to be a lovely colour oh it is it's a much more vibrant blue than this one that's a really really lovely colour so you've got your primaries in here if you look you've got your yellow your red and your blue so you can make even if you only get one set you've actually got the option to make other colours oh that's a nice deep green isn't it so those two greens are very very different and we've got another green here so bear in mind this is the C one so this is lots of different C based colors which is your blues your greens and your browns now I'm getting a bit excited that one was called Lorelei the one before the really deep ones called Enchantress and then this one this has kind of got more white in it it's it feels softer feels a less aggressive green I'm just going to put another layer on to see when we add a bit more pigment yeah it's a much more gentle green that that's called sea mist I've got a little dot on my paper so it looks like MJST which just really confused me but it is actually mist and just a bit of mucky paper so these two are the ones that I believe are going to be our metallic ones right so what I'm finding with this one straight away is it's a lot more solid it doesn't give its color up as easily as the rest of them let's just add a little bit more water onto the top of there and see if that makes a difference yeah this this feels a lot thicker as a paint and I would hazard a guess that if you kept rubbing onto the card with it, you're going to end up with a little bit of pilling going on. But I actually think it's a really lovely colour. Let's see this one. See the gold then, this, this is called alchemy, but it's kind of a goldy yellow. 
This one's called Flirtatious. It reminds me a little bit more of um, a shimmery eyeshadow. And I'm not sure if you're actually going to be able to see the shimmer because they're still a little bit wet. So we might come back to those and have a look at those. But yeah, you get these two. I was right. These two are the shimmery ones. But this one is a really interesting texture. It's, it feels very different to all of the other paints that are in that set. Right. <laughs> Let's have a look at this one. What's this one called? I can't remember. Again, we've got the blank card. This one's the neutral palette. So you can see straight away, you've got your skin tones, you've got your white, your gray, and your black, which are obviously really useful for changing the tones of other colors, particularly black and white. But you've got skin tones, you've got browns, oranges, more, I suppose, autumnal colors. So let's do a little bit of swatching with these. So your first one is called Mango. Guess what, it's a yellowy orange. Oh, that, I love that colour. That is going to look stunning with this pink, which is from the, which sets this, the Brights palette. This fairy tale pink with that mango yellow. They go fabulously together. I'm loving that. That is a really nice colour. So the next one along looks quite red, but it's called Apple. So you just put water on and look how that colour has changed. It's gone from looking quite dull to actually being an incredibly vibrant colour. Very, very vibrant. That is beautiful. So again, in this palette, as with the other two, you do have your primary colours. They're all slightly different. It is a red, a yellow and a blue in each set, but they're all slightly different. So you're going to get different colourings. Well, then we've not sh sprayed, can't speak. We haven't sprayed this yet, have we? Let's give it a quick spray. You don't, as I say, you don't have to spray them, but I just find that they seem to play more nicely if you spray them. So there's your primaries out of that set. So you've got your mango, apple and blueberry. So compare that to the first set I showed you, which is the brights, where you've got buzzy, ladybug and butterfly. They're very different colours, but they're still your primaries. And then let's get the other set, which is your glitzy palette. You have your blue. You've got two blues, Sea Nymph and Nereid. Nereid. And you've got your yellow, which is a very, very different yellow. It's a much more vibrant yellow. This is more of an orangey yellow. And your red. This is a very deep red. This is a very vibrant red. This one is probably more your magenta, cyan and yellow. So it's interesting that you can use the colours. They can be classed as primary colours, but look very different. Oh, this grey. See, when you first saw that grey, it looked like it was going to be quite dark. Oh, that is a beautiful colour. To really soften your pictures, I think that's going to be really, really nice. And over the top, I think I see that being used a lot on my mixed media projects. I do like grey in my mixed media projects. So you can't see this one at all because it's white. You can see it is starting to cover that line up, but you can't really see it because it's white on white. This one we have Raven. So you know straight away that's going to be a black. Oh, that's a bit of a sexy black. I'm just going to stretch that one out a little bit at the side. Let's see how that looks. So we'll do this and then we'll start to draw it out. And you can see as I'm doing that, well, I don't know whether you'll be able to see it on camera. It's really black. It's beautiful and black. But as you pull it out, it's got grey and brown in there. So there's actually a hint of brown to my eyes in that one. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera very well. But it's a beautiful beautiful black now here we have the actual brown which is called cocoa oh yes that's lovely see there's one thing you might notice as well with your, your watercolors when you first get them there might be a little bit of a layer on them just from the manufacturing process so the first time you actually wet them you might see them change color quite dramatically or you might suddenly get like a little lining on your, your palette so just go back in don't be afraid of it just go back in so you can see from deep brown 
all the way down to a very, very pale brown there. I wonder why I chose to do the black and brown on this one. This colour, I'm looking at it and thinking it's a bit yuck, personally. It's called Kiss Kiss. I suppose it's like a sienna colour this. Oh, see we've got a little bit of mixing going on here. That's pretty. That's what happens when they're wet and you touch them together. So be careful. Do as I say, not as I do. This is a kind of deep beige. It's called Spice. Actually on the paper it looks more like a spice than it does in the palette. That one's completely changed colour now because it's mixed in. What I'm going to do with that one is get a raggy. If you do do this, don't be afraid of taking your raggy. You can remove the colour right up to the edge like this. And redo your swatch over the top. So if you do find... Oh, I'm throwing my hair at you now. If you do find that happens, don't be afraid of redoing it. It's easy enough to be done. And again, you could even, if you completely botch up your, swat, your swatch on here, I've said to you earlier about get a book and do your swatches in a book so that all of your colours... So I think I've got probably Jane Davenport, Arteza, Newton and... I want to say Newton and Ridley, but that's the Coronation Street Brewery. What are they called? Something in Newton. It's gone out of my head. They're the, the companies that I currently have watercolours for, and there's another one, but I can't remember who it is. But most of them are in one big box, but I'm going to keep these separate because I think the tins are cute. This is called Buff, and this is kind of your nice pale skin tone. It's quite a nice colour. Oh, that's a nice one as well. That's probably more your pinky one. This is sand. The buff one's more your pinky tones. You might use that for facial highlights. This, I'm liking the look of it. It's, it's orange. It's vitamin C. Oh, good name, actually, that for orange. That is a sexy orange. See, I keep... What I would say to you is when you're doing your, your uh, swatches, keep going left to right, don't go right to left, because that's why I keep mixing them, because the uh, end of my brush just keeps touching the one next to it. That orange is really, really beautiful. I really like it. So that is the... I've forgotten the name of them. Let's just unfold this. The Neutral Palette. So they're the three sets. I don't think there are any other sets. I think that's it. But there you are to pull the sets that you get with this. Now I'm bringing this one back in because this is the one that had the shimmer in it. Let's see if the shimmer is a little bit more visible now. I don't know if that's showing up. It's these bottom two are the shimmery ones. I can see that there is shimmer there, particularly on this one. I think that's probably why that one's a different texture because it's got a little bit more gilt to it. Let us have a play with the shimmer. I'm actually going to overlay the shimmer onto these. I'm going to do it on the black. I'm going to do this one onto the brown actually. See this just, it's not picking the colour up. It, it is going onto the brush but it doesn't feel the same. Let's just add a tiny drop of water to it. So I don't know if you've ever seen how watercolours are made but they're, they're basically a pigment with um, a binder in them that then when it all sets and dries and the water evaporates, the fluid evaporates, you end up with the little blocks. Or you end up usually, I'm lying, you end up with a paste that you then put into the little blocks and then it dries and it becomes what we see as a watercolour. I'm actually quite liking how that looks from a shimmer perspective over the top. Just going to do it on its own and see. So you can see that's it's almost like um, a bit of a mucky makeup, a shimmery eye makeup that's gone a bit gloopy. I'm not sure if it's meant to be like this or maybe it's just a bit of a dud one. Who knows? It's still usable. It's just not quite what I was expecting. Let me get a bit more water. 
so that you can see it's yeah it's picking up loads of it now put that over the top this one seems to be a bit more gritty in its consistency the others are all very very smooth I quite fancy the idea of making my own watercolours because you use a glass mat and a glass um, either pestle or mortar I never know which it is the the bit that you press on and you mix them together and it just looks so so satisfying that is beautiful let me see if I've turned that light a little bit you can really start to see the glisten on that one particularly so that's the gold on top of the black now let's see what happens if I get a little bit of the black which is this raven and I'm just going to mix it in with the gold so we then start to get a shimmery gold that's quite nice actually so you can make your gold still your, your black still black but with a hint of shimmer so it's about playing with your colors and playing with the the ones that you have the sets that you have the, the watercolors that you have whether they be Jane Davenport or um, Thingy and Newton oh that's going to annoy me I'm going to have to look it up um, it's not Newton and Ridley though I know that much but whichever you've got Arteza whoever it is there's a whole host of different brands out there they all are going to be reacting slightly differently and the reason for that is they're a different recipe it's like if you went into five different bakeries and bought a scone a plain scone they'd all taste different because they have different recipes they'd look the same maybe but they'll taste different and it's the same with these they look the same they just look like your little pans of watercolour but they're all a different recipe so they're going to react differently they're going to have different levels of intensity different levels of opacity so some might be more translucent which means when you put them on top of something else you can see what's underneath whereas others might be much more opaque which means you can't see what's underneath very well so just experiment with what you've got and again this is where your swatches are really really useful because they give you a chance to remind yourself whenever you want to use them what do I want out of these so there they all are, I don't want to put them straight into the uh, the wet paint, that's why I'm being a bit cautious. But that is the three sets that I now own of Jane Davenport watercolours. So you will see these popping up in different videos that I'm doing. And if you have any questions about them, please give me a shout. I hope that's been useful, even if it's just made you think about swatching your own watercolours. I'm liking the pigmentation of these. I think they're very, very vibrant. I mean, just looking at this one, which is the Brights palette, it truly is what it says. Those colours are so, so vibrant. Sometimes they can come out quite watery. I think there's a lot of pigmentation in them and they come out beautifully. And the Raven is a true black. It's a really nice black. Again, um, these two colours, these... Yeah, those two probably, maybe this one mainly, I'm not a fan of. I think all the others are quite nice. The cocoa's quite a nice deep brown. Let's have a look on here. The water spirit, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. It's a colour I'll use, but it, I'm not sure about the name. And this flirtatious, I shall have to do some investigating and see whether my flirtatious is a, bit, a little bit less flirtatious than maybe it should be. Um, but yeah enjoy playing with your watercolours and keep an eye out for me doing some more there is another video that will be going up of what i've done with this this set just to make i can show you the little piece that i make in it i just make this with them which is a really simple background that just adds some interest i mean you could even use that just on a card as it is so there's several things that you can do with them but yeah have fun with your colours and whatever you've got it doesn't have to be Jane Davenport it can be any of your watercolours it can be watercolours in a tube it can be your gouache or gouache or however you say that phrase I'm not sure but just have fun with the colours that you've got thanks very much for watching bye for now